Hello. Today we are going to deal with the uh, economic com uh, component of the metropolitan genoma. And uh, as we have seen in the previous presentation, the uh, genoma of the metropolis is composed of four elements. The economics, the social, the physical environment, and the institutional component. No? The, we have seen that economy and social are generally uh, in a dichotomy, at odds, uh, trying to pull each other for their own uh, objectives, which is efficiency versus equity, and the physical component can in some way help uh, into that dialogue that has to be equilibrated through the institutional, uh, the institutions, the governance of the metropolis. We are going to look at the economic component, and the economic component, as uh, uh, classical economics um, uh, point out, there are three factors in the economic component, capital, labor, and entrepreneurship. And these factors have to, uh, to, to be the best possible to achieve competitiveness in the, in the economy, and then being a metropolis that will be able to be competitive in the concert of metropolis around the world. If you are not competitive in that concert of metropolis that, as we saw, are very strong, powerful economic uh, built-ups, uh, extremely productive, if you are not competitive, you will be out of the game worldwide. And as we are globalized, you need your uh, metropolis to be competitive. How to make the metropolis competitive? You have to make the metropolis competitive to, to achieve a good capital investment, to achieve a good labor force, and to achieve uh, a, a good entrepreneurship and competitiveness in that entrepreneurship. Let's look at those uh, th three factors one by one uh, in, a, in a metropolis and in the economics. When you are dealing with capital, you are dealing with fixed capital and circulating, running capital. No? A metropolis is extremely important, the fixed capital. is the infrastructures, is the roads, is the buildings, is all the fixed uh, elements that, that constitute what we call a metropolis. No? And that, uh, to, to be able to attract these, these capitals to your metropolis, capitals are looking for high return, uh, high liquidity, and low risk. So you have to provide an economy with these elements to be able to attract uh, the capitals to your metropolis. And you should not forget that when you're making policies, when you are implementing policies in the metropolis. These uh, uh, factors have a limit. Uh, there is a, 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 a 19th century psychologist that uh, created the wound curve. It was wound uh, from Germany. And the wound curve, you have a maximum moment, and then you decline, and you can even go into, into negative numbers. And that applies a lot into metropolis. For instance, the congestion of the traffic in, in metropolis. You must have an infrastructure to be able to, to, to respond to the needs of traffic. But if you put too much traffic, that will uh, congest the roads, and you will end up with a gridlock in the old metropolis. What should you do? Should you increase that infrastructure? Some say yes, you should increase that infrastructure to, to be able to provide more transport. Some say no, what you have to do is to manage that capital, that infrastructure, to make it more efficient and to have other alternative means of providing that service and not just by adding up infrastructure. That's a debate that we will see uh, later on in these lectures. But you see how you have to uh, be focus on the capital that you have invested in the metropolis to be able to make it work right. Metropolis have a limit in, in the accumulation of that uh, infrastructure capital. We have throughout the history of the world three phases. The metropolis that do not have that capital, the metropolis that built up that capital, the metropolis that have achieved such a level of capital that they do not need much more. What they need is to manage that capital, to tame those capitals. I am thinking about mainly Paris, London, New York. It's so complex to understand those metropolis. There are so many capital invested in the infrastructures, transport, and so on, so on, that it really is, is, is a challenge to be able to work around, to, wor uh, to, to, to go around the metropolis, to understand the management, to understand how to, to use the, that huge capital. So you have to tame it to make everyone able to use for their best interest and for the best benefit, that capital. So only uh, those large metropolises have reached that. The other metropolises are growing into that situation. But you see how you must understand the mechanisms of capital 
to, to, to be able to manage the metropolis. The other element is uh, entrepreneurship. In the 19th century, classical economics was land. That was the times of uh, Marxism and so on. It's not anymore land, it's entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship is extremely important, as is the way of putting together the uh, elements, the, uh, the, the assets of your metropolis in such a way that it will be more competitive and more efficient. And uh, entrepreneurship is based in two elements. Management, which is a basic knowledge that you can learn how to manage those uh, assets in the best way possible. But there is another element, which is innovation. And the world is changing. We are not anymore in the century. The 20th century was a century of cheap labor to have low prices to be able to put your goods in other markets and to be competitive. We are not anymore in that century. We are in a century of innovation. Innovation allows you to have a product that will be unique. You are the only one that has that product. And then by having that product, you are in some way uh, have a monopoly. You are the only one to have that. You can put the price you want to that product. Always the demand will have a limit and you cannot get uh, crazy about that. But you have a, a monopoly and that is what makes your uh, firm, your city, more competitive. That's why cities are fighting in innovation. And we do not work innovation in the same way that we did work traditional economies. In a, in, a, in a traditional economy, you have a hierarchical mechanisms. Uh, you were siloed in, in specializations. You had a top-down dialogue and so on. That's not working anymore. This is Antoine van Achmelt that has written an, a very interesting book looking at that shift in the way competitiveness works all around the world and uh, the, the needs for, to reach that competitiveness. And that's an issue that metropolis are dealing a lot with, the need of innovation and competitiveness. And for that, we must realize that innovation is different from research. No? When you research, you discover, you want to know the knowledge can be useful, and it has an epistemology. Sorry, epistemology is the, the way you, you produce science the science of producing science, you have a way of doing things which is very sound and very rigid and ha you have to prove what you have uh, discovered. Innovation is about invention, it's about uh, providing uh, new goods that will be useful to the people uh, depending on their different circumstances and the evolution of the economy. So it's a completely different approach to research and innovation. The third uh, factor of economy is uh, workforce, labor. And there you must have an adequate quality, you must have the, the best quality for the kind of uh, uh, economic uh, direction you are taking to metropolis, and then you have to have quantity of work, a huge labor uh, force to be able to produce all the goods and to, 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 to grow in economy and so on. So we are going to see about those elements of the labor productivity uh, of the quality and quantity of uh, workforce in the social component, so I'm not going to extend myself uh, too much into this element. But we must understand that to have a competitiveness, a competitive uh, metropolis, we must have these three elements, we must understand how the economy works, and we must manage that metropolis in the knowledge to make it more productive and more competitive, because if not, we will be out of the globalization process and we will be in the outskirts of the future of the world. These uh, elements, as you see, economics is one of them. We are going to look at them in the next presentations, and we hope that uh, you will uh, join us for the next presentation that will be about the social component of the genome of the metropolis, and you can download these presentations out of those uh, links that you see in the slide. Thank you very much.